Good morning, sir. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Another Sunday. I love Sundays. I love every day. <laughs> All um, right, so we're going to read rule six. Rule six, treaties and white magic. Um, is that page 100 on the PDF, which I'll be reading from. I think you probably will too. Blue book page 209. Yeah, 209. Yeah, and it starts off uh, with this one. I'll just, and then before we get into it, the divas of the lower four feel the force when the eye opens. They are driven forth and lose their master. How are you going to? All right, not, not much to talk about there. You have to work the eye, right? Uh, All right, should we get at it? Yeah, let's get at it. All right. It's a pretty so work, straightforward rule, yeah. Very important. Short. The work of the eye. We have for consideration now one of the simplest rules of magic, yet at the same time, one of the most practical and one upon which the entire success of all magical work depends. I would like to point out to the investigating aspirant that the key to the situation depicted in the rule lies in the word contemplation found in the preceding one. Let us therefore study that word with care and seek its accurate definition. To contemplate involves steady vision, one pointedly directed towards a specific objective. The soul or solar angel might be regarded as gazing in three directions. The first of which is towards the light supernal, towards that central life or energy, which holds hid within itself the purpose and plan towards which all being tends. I know not how to express this more clearly. What that directive force may be, what is the secret of being itself is only revealed during the more advanced initiations and is only finally grasped when the causal body itself, the Karana Sarira, disintegrates and the final limitation slips away. With this direction of the solar angel's vision, we need not concern ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> so we all tend toward, we all tend toward uh, divinity, right? Right. Every human being. And I, I like in that how on that page there, he says, which all beings, all which all being tends. It doesn't say beings, it says being. Right. So there's a there's a lot there. And when you were reading this, man, it made me think of uh, you know, you know, kids in school, uh, even grammar school, right? And they're daydreaming. Mm. Right. And uh I know I was a big daydreamer. I, I was not in school, bro. No. <laughs> no, so, so how interesting is that? Well, and you think about that, and we were kind of, you know, kind of chastised for doing that. Right. You're getting, you're the getting question smacked. Is, you're getting where smacked were we? all the time. We were probably right, right where we needed to be. You, you were <laughs> contemplating. You, you were in. Right. Deep contemplation, even then, right? Now, what were you contemplating about? That, you know, I guess that that that's based on our experience, earthly experience, up to that point, probably. But if you can rec, if you recognize that, even just recognize that we were doing that you know that you're capable of contemplation right of more of you know the abstract and of the uh the light supernal yeah and in those early contemplations we were probably a lot more in tune with just being then um, then, you know, kind of let off the tracks as we progress through life. Because like we said, we were contemplating at that young age and I can't even remember what about, but 
obviously it was something taking us there. And um, as opposed to having um, being chastised for doing that, because you're not taking in the information that you quote unquote have to be taking in or somewhere else. Um, it's just interesting to think about it that way. And it also, I don't know for you, but for me, it kind of makes me look at, you know, I want my kids to do good in school. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I don't want them to not daydream. <laughs> you know? <Right>. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> because there's something there. I think there's something there. So it's interesting that. Well, there's a, there's a whole lot there. Yeah. You know, because even, you know, when, when, it, when a kid is quiet, too quiet, they get like people think that there's something wrong. You know, we're, there's all these exoteric diagnoses, you know, being right. put on. And when, you know, these are the probably the more advanced beings, potentially. Well, well that, and that's kind of where I was going. It's like at that early age, before their minds are clouded with all the other information that gets packed in there through growing through adulthood. And now, and now we have to work to unpack all that because we have to come back to source. <laughs> it's like we were closer then than we are now. And so in some way or shape, because we were just maybe just there. Right. And led off that path. Um, and not necessarily ill intention. It's just the way the system is that we live in. Um, but it's just interesting to think of it through that lens because it's like, what are we really supposed to be paying attention to? <laughs> this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. No, it's good observation. Um, you know, with the direction of the solar angel's vision, we need not concern ourselves. So, all right. Um, second direction over the kingdom wherein the solar angel reigns supreme over the world of souls or egoic impulses of hierarchical, hierarchical work and of pure thought. This is the kingdom of God, the world of heavenly being. It is the state whereof disciples are becoming increasingly aware where an initiates work and from which the masters in their graded ranks direct the evolutionary process of the planet. These two directions in which the soul looks constitute the world of its spiritual experience and the object of its aspiration. Let it not be forgotten that the spiritual man, the solar angel, has also his goal of endeavor and that his becomes the predominant impulse once the subjugation of the vehicle and the three worlds is brought about. Just as the fully intelligent human being can only begin consciously to function as a soul and to contact the kingdom of the soul, so only the fully active and dominant soul in which the Buddhic principle is potentially controlling can begin to contact the state of pure being in which the monad or spirit eternally rests. The development of the intellect in man marks his fitness for the work of treading the path Back to full soul consciousness. The development of the Buddhic or wisdom love aspect in the solar angel demonstrates his fitness for further progression in the awareness of the state of pure being. Hmm. Yeah, that says a lot. You know, I, I want to say as you're reading it, my the key words that stuck out there to me were. Um, Pure thought, right? Um, and then pure being, uh, eternally, you know, the you know, the being in which the monad or spirit eternally rests, you know, so pure thought, pure being, eternally resting mind, right? like there's all these things kind of like, like it really says where our mental processes should be, maybe. 
like not focused on the lower nature and the the things going on down low. Right. Well, that kind of goes back to what we were just talking about in the first one too, because that's where we're led to focus our attention is in the lower physical. Um, I think I could be wrong. Um, but what stuck out for me there was right in that last paragraph, the development of the intellect and in man marks his fitness for the work of treading the path back to full soul consciousness. That kind of reminds me of the statement I made on the first one of, we might have already been there when we were children, daydreaming, off in La La Land. Well, no, it wasn't La La Land, dude. <laughs> it's probably where our minds were supposed to be. Um, but now we have to tread back on that path to get back to full soul consciousness, to get back to that point of source. It's just interesting that... <laughs> well, it's also, it's also pretty interesting that that's that's this is the state that the disciples are becoming increasingly aware of, right? Right. So, uh, and then that's this is where the initiates work from, uh, and from which the masters in their graded ranks direct the evolutionary process. So this this is saying a lot. This is the kingdom, kingdom of souls, the world of souls, the kingdom of God. Uh, the world of heavenly being, man, that is, uh, you know, I, very interesting that, you know, the last line of this also says, uh, this, is this is where we demonstrate our fitness for further progression in the awareness of the state of pure being. So... Mm -hmm. It basically says, like, how you act, I don't say how you act, your behavior is, um, you know, how mature are you in, in this? When you're ready to be mature, then you can... Uh, further progress in that state of pure being. But if you're not ready, yeah. you're not gonna. And now a lot of that goes back to, you know, um, the fact, you know, science, I think, and vibration and, uh, you know, the door of initiation being magnetic and whether or not you can pass through it and stay or, you know, there's just a lot. There's, I mean, obviously, there's a lot there, but a lot. I mean, uh, how we behave is going to determine, and not, I may mean, not behave, how we are. Right. Our beingness, our beingness determines how much beingness we can be aware of, I guess. I think it's interesting to think too, just the concept and the term pure being, state of pure being. Would you agree that when we're born, we're in a state of pure being when we're born? And as time progresses, we become immature. And now we're working back to maturity level and states of pure being. Well, I think it's always, you know, I don't know anything, but I would just say. Me that, neither. <laughs> you know, we know that coming into <clears throat> incarnation is more traumatic than going out of it. Right. And it's looked on like it's, uh, you know, this is more of a death than a birth is more of a death than a birth and death is more of a birth than, than a death. 
Mm. It's very much that's you know backwards. So yeah. So where you're coming from and where you're going back to is probably, you know, to live as Christ and to die as game. There's so there's that, right? So the soul incarnates, goes through that horrific process to be here. I guess to help along, <laughs> to help along the rest of the beings to progress in the awareness of state of, and state of pure being. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. a lot there. Right. All right. The third direction in which the soul looks and wherein he exercises the faculty of contemplative vision is towards his reflection in the three worlds. The object of the long struggle between the higher and the lower man has been to make the lower responsive to and sensitively aware of the forces emanating from the soul as the soul contemplates his triple instrument. There is an interesting relation between these three directions of contemplation and the awakening in the three major centers. This cannot be more than hinted at owning to the obtrusiveness of the subject. So many factors govern this awakening and each aspirant has to determine for himself the order and mode of his awakening. The center between the eyebrows, commonly called the third eye, has a unique and peculiar function. As I have pointed out elsewhere, students must not confound the pineal gland with the third eye. They are related, but they are not the same. In the secret doctrine, they are apparently regarded as the same and the casual reader can easily confound them, but they are by no means identical. This HPB knew, but the apparent confusion was per permitted until more of the etheric nature of forms was known. The third eye manifests as a result of the vibratory interaction between the forces of the soul working through the pineal gland and the forces of the personality working through the pituitary body. These negative and positive forces interact and when potent enough produce the light in the head. Just as the physical eye came into being in response to the light of the sun, so the spiritual eye equally comes into being in response to the light of the spiritual sun. As the aspirant develops, he becomes aware of the light I refer to the light in all forms, veiled by all sheaths and expressions of the divine life, and not just to the light within the aspirant himself. As his awareness of this light increases, so does the apparatus of vision develop. And the mechanism whereby he can see things in the spiritual light comes into being in the etheric body. This is the eye of Shiva for it is only fully utilized in the magical work when the monadic aspect, the will aspect, is controlling. And as I read that, getting that sensation right here. <laughs> the monadic aspect controlling is uh, pretty key to, dis to this discussion of the... Uh, spiritual vision down at the bottom there because that does not come into play until after the third initiation All right so prior so higher up on there i'm wondering if we're talking uh, if we progress down i think we are kind of progressing down that's how amazing this writing is all the time right there's a progression even just in this mm -hmm. um, the center between the eyebrows starts coming into function, unique and peculiar. <laughs> uh, it's great. Oh, um, you know, this just this is a process to get the third eye functioning, fully functioning, because you got it. You got to get the pituitary body working through the personality. So, and, it, and you also have to have the, the pineal gland working with the soul. 
So that needs to come in. They need to start talking. And then you have, uh, I guess, to uh, you start to spark a little bit somewhere in there. How did the yeah, long struggle between the higher and the lower man has been to make the lower responsive and sensitively aware of the forces emanating from the soul as the soul contemplates his triple instrument? I think it's, where are you going with that? I, I don't, with that? Uh, nowhere, yeah. I just, no, it yeah, just, and then it just stuck out point, for me, going back to the beginning. And the aspirant, as, as the aspirant develops, he becomes aware of the light. Right. And that sensation that you're feeling in your, in your forehead there would, would absolutely, should, I mean, I would think that would be us becoming aware. I was, is that of, like bringing the two together, right? Because right? it says here, the object long struggle between the higher and the lower man has been to make the lower responsive to and subjectively aware of the forces emanating from the soul of the soul contemplates a triple instrument. So there's a struggle between the higher and the lower. Is this kind of bringing the two together in unity? Perfect well, there's harmony? a struggle, you know, there's a struggle before every release mm -hmm. or every expansion or initiation you know you read a you reach a a point of tension right i guess just like a flower getting ready to bloom um you know and a, and it and then in another sense you could use the word orgasm of sorts mm -hmm. you know uh but that you know there's a build up and then a release, you know, the tension builds. And that, you know, just so, so you're feeling this here, probably in other places as well. Now, we know because, you know, Carla has told us that not everybody's the same. Right. And is going to experience the same physiological. Is that the right word for that physiological? I think so. Physiological responses, right? Yeah, we're not all. Everybody's gonna have, you know, it's gonna be different. So that's not to say if you don't feel that you're not having any growth. But I guess for other people, maybe ray dependent or since you know the, the sensitivity of your apparatus mm -hmm. would allow you to feel these sensations going on actually in the body. And, you know, I don't think anybody's going, oh, well, that's definitely my pituitary uh, body right. uh, coming into function or, well, no, that's, that's, that's my pineal gland. So the soul is trying to talk to me right now. I mean, I, maybe that is very aware. I'll be a very aware state of being, but I, I I certainly don't have that, like to that, but I, I do feel the sensations and right. um, cycles of sensations, I want to say, right. after having, you know, you can't not pay attention to this. Yeah, I was going to say, it's something like when you get that, you should be paying attention to it, as opposed to what, you know, most people might do and just kind of ignore it as a, or like, oh, I'm just getting the chills or I'm just getting goosebumps or there might be something more there. Well, I Pay definitely think, we've said this before. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. I, we've said this before. This is an incredible, this would be a good discussion to have for, you know, maybe not even just people who are um, studying this material. This, is, this might this be interesting to everybody, Christians right. alike, because you don't have to be studying this material to have that, those sensations. Right, right. So this is an everybody kind of a thing. This isn't just for study or, you know, those who study theosophy or. Right. Well, 
you know, I, 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 I have to thinking back, I probably been getting sensations like that. I mean, I think everybody does get those sensations, but we don't really pay attention to them until you kind of make yourself aware of what it could actually be. Um, and I never really paid much attention to them until I, you know, had like my first astrological reading and kind of started getting a sense of, you know, what could be going on at certain time frames throughout my life. Um, and if you're going through major transitions, a transit, and you're getting those sensations, well, that's your trigger. It's like, well, okay, <laughs> I'm getting the download or something like that. Something's something, there's something there that needs to be paid attention to. Um, and I just don't, I don't know why I keep coming back to that, but it's just like, I don't want people just ignoring those sensations when you get them. Um, it's just, there's probably something more meaningful behind it and knowing where you are and kind of what phase you're going through can be helpful, kind of bring some clarity around that. So there's a lot of clarity to be had in this particular and number three right here yeah. where it says that, you know, the disciples or aspirants are becoming more aware of this state of being mm -hmm. initiates work in that state. Right. So where, I mean, are you becoming more aware or are you consciously working in that? Or is that's it combo good, of both? Right. That, that's a good indicator of, you know, potentially if you're, if you're looking for something like that. And, and then no, you know, potentially the sensations, they continue to grow. Yeah. And then the light in the head. And they, and, and sometimes they, they go away and they don't come around for months. But um, at some point, honestly, it, it, uh, it, it's so radiant that there's no mistaking it. Sure. Like you can't mistake feeling like you, the top of your head is stuck in the, in, in the sun. Right. Or something. So. Yeah. But yeah, I know it cycles. There's cycles to the whole thing too, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and I think Carla would say there's a, it's very mechanical. Mm -hmm. Even. Well, it's, I think it's a, a lot of taking in and then kind of processing and grounding all that and then the cycle starts all over again um which is very interesting and and and, and very scientifically accurate to the to the tiniest degree oh right? yeah like, so, down at the molecular level right <laughs> yeah i forget what carla says in that she says it's it's so calculated you you cannot cheat you, you know, there's no cheating, even if you wanted to, it doesn't matter. So that beingness that we're working on, it, it, we can walk around trying to be holier than thou, mm -hmm. but unless you are at that. Right, you're not that. You're only cheating your, your yourself. <laughs> silly goose. You're not there. Right. You're just playing you're there. Because when you're there, you're there. And then I think when you're there, it's very easy to recognize others who are there. It's obvious, totally obvious for, for somebody there to know everything below them and that somebody's there, oh, you're just kidding yourself. And they know how you're kidding yourself based on the spiritual vision that comes later. Mm -hmm. So we literally can't know what we don't know and the things that are prepared for us for later, we can't know. All we can know where we're at is to be real in the in being. Just get very comfortable in this. Be harmless, and the harmlessness of it, I guess, is kind of how I see it. The purity, the harmlessness. 
of that and let that develop because we still have flaws all, all throughout this process. I mean, you read Initiations Human and Solar and it's very clear, like, you know, in between these, we are not, we have not cleared ourselves of all these things yet. And maybe we kid ourselves sometimes. Right. Still likely kidding ourselves. But you can't, you can't cheat. So there's that. Anyway, yeah. Are we moving? What, what else you got, sir? That's all I got right now. You want to move on with the reading? Yeah, the good news is, is these books are for us at our level. You know, that's that's the good news to everybody. Right. This is really to help us understand this sort of thing mm -hmm. and help others. Under, not, maybe not help us. Like, I think we've talked about that before. Is it really for us? It's really so we can help everybody understand. Like, and, and then that keeps spreading so that we, as this processes are happening, we understand what's happening. Right. And others can understand. If we understand, then others can understand. And then others can understand. And then everybody, you know. But to, well, once you, at the end of that, number three there, once you get up to the, the monadic aspect uh, being uh, the will aspect controlling, that's that's quite far along um, from where what we're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so I'll read this part. Of it. Up here. All right. By means of the third eye, the soul accomplishes three activities. It is the eye of vision. By its means. The spiritual man sees behind the forms of all aspects of the divine expression. He becomes aware of the light of the world and contacts the soul within all forms. Just as the physical eye registers forms, so does the spiritual eye register the illumination within those forms, which illumination indicates a specific state of being. I'm going to read that again. Just as the physical eye registers forms, so does the spiritual eye register the illumination within those forms, which illumination indicates a specific state of being. It opens up the world of radiance. Man, that's awesome. And we just were kind of talking about that above, right? Um. You see beyond, you know, what, you know, by its means, I guess we're assuming, you know, on the mental plane, mm -hmm. <clears throat> looking through the, the eye, the third eye, you see beyond the, or behind the forms and become aware of the light. In each soul, I, like this is like where the light of the world contacts the soul within all forms. And then, you know, this, so we're talking about an enlightened person, you know, being able to see, you know, the radiance of, of, of all of those that they encounter essentially. Mm -hmm. Now we're not, you know, Is this referencing etheric vision or is this not? Yeah, that? it seems is like it? It, it is. But this is also. Well, know, it's seeing the light. I mean, it's the easiest, simplest way to put it. But what see, this does radiance seeing the light that we're mean? talking about, right. though, the radiance. Is it really a color? Is it a color, sir? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, is it a, is or is the seeing a, a feeling? I <laughs> right. Is it a knowing? Right. Uh, so right. This is more of a and and look, you're 
it's not like you're you're looking through walls. I'm not you're not looking through walls behind forms. So this is a this, this is, is a state, a, it's a specific state of being. It says right there towards the end. Right. The spiritual eye registers, or this so does the spiritual eye register the illumination within those forms, which illumination indicates a specific state of being. Right. So, so you've heard the term, you've heard this before, maybe with my third eye, I spy, or I spy with my third eye everything. And that's a very provocative statement. Mm -hmm. But you're not a provocative being when you're there, right? But, so it's just provocative to anybody if we don't understand it. But when you're in that state of being, you are able to see more and know more. Now, I we don't know what, I, I can't know what, to what level that goes. Mm -hmm. right? But you've, we've all experienced this as we're waking, you know, as the third eye is coming into function. We, we, it's not, maybe not, I don't know, to that, higher level that you know initiates beyond the third degree you're working with obviously because we don't know mm -hmm. can't I don't even pretend to know what's going on but i know that there's a knowing we've experienced that so you know you know when you look at at somebody and you just know kind of you get a you get a reading And then later find out that your reading was probably accurate. Right? Well, that's because they're in that state of being of illumination. Um, All right. Yeah. I don't know, like maybe Ram Das. <laughs> Did you think he was in that state of being? Well, Ma I know Maharaji was. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Ram Das got there later. I, he's he's an interesting example because a lot of the the lectures that have become very popular by him were are popular because he was talking about when he wasn't he was talking about his path. Right. He wasn't talking about after uh, after the. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. It was more popular. <laughs> stuff that's on the internet for people to you're going to google ram das you're going to get some popular things and they're going to be him talking about his path not when he was at that he alludes to it but once you get there again you don't you're not really talking about it anymore mm -hmm. like this is how i am because you're not that's not you you became nobody you're talking about everything around it you're nobody, becoming nobody. It's not personal any longer at that point. Right? So there's a lot. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty abstract, I guess, there. So let's. Well, I guess what I was getting at there, though, was it's like maybe it's not a physical aspect then, because it's almost like when you saw him speak, you can kind of see, I mean, or at least I did. Maybe it was just me. I don't know. You just kind of see a, not a glow, but some kind of like physiologically, he's changing when he speaks. Not, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like he's glowing, <laughs> but he has the glow in his face. It's not a real glow per se. I think you know what I'm talking about. I, it's hard to explain, but that's kind of why I asked about him and and or even uh like watching um is it pranayama right watching him speak you see it's like they're going somewhere else when they're talking pranayama is a breathing is breathing exercises we, i'm not sure who you're talking about there yeah man I'm, I'm referencing the front person here
Well, I guess it doesn't matter. There's also faculties that go along, you know, as DK talks about with each subplane, there's, there are, you know, more advanced faculties that come with each of them. So you've got, you know, clair audience and these other, you know, psychic type of things that, that, bec that do become available as you, as you progress. All right. So I didn't mean pranayama. <laughs> um, uh, Oh, autobiography of a yogi. Oh yeah, Yogananda. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's actually <laughs> Yogananda. <pretty cool. laughs> yeah. That's what I was trying to think of. He's a very interesting guy too. But when you see him speak, it's it's like he's going somewhere else. He's somewhere else. I am Paramahamsa Yogananda. He is so powerful. Yeah. All right. He, he is. Uh, <laughs> he is. Uh, Powerful, powerful being, you know. But I just, I, that's why I question that. It's like, it's that what this illumination is. That yeah, specific you know, state man, of being, I think you're right. You where they assume, look, they look illuminated. I mean, not you can, in the physical sense. It's not like light shining out of their eyes or anything like that. But it's, you just see them. They're there, but they're not. <laughs> they're, yeah, you can see that they're turned inward. Yeah, there we go. That, that, they're not living, they're not outside, they're inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely see that. There's a, you can, you know, it's interesting that you say that because you, you, if you go through pictures of, uh, I immediately think of Ananda Mai Ma uh, and her pictures because I, I always think that uh, my little girl looks like her, but um, she's very much turned inward in most of her pictures. She's not really there. You know, you can look through all of those pictures and see who's really, I think you could do that. It's a good exercise, actually. It'd be fun. It's a fun thing to differentiate that, but yeah. All right, you want me to do number two? Yeah, go for it. All right. So by means of the third eye, the soul accomplishes three activities. Number two, it is the controlling factor of the magical work. All white magical work is carried forward with a definitely constructive purpose made possible through the use of the intelligent will. In other words, the soul knows the plan and when the alignment is right and the attitude correct, the will aspect of the divine man can function and bring about results in the three worlds. The organ used is the third eye. The analogy to this can be seen in the often noticed power of the human eye as it controls other human beings and animals by look and through steady gazing can act magnetically. Force flows through the focused human eye. Force flows through the focused third eye. Well, that kind of, you know, we've all heard of the evil eye. So what DK just did there was tell us that this is all re very real, right? Um, force flows through the focused human eye and through the focused third eye. And you can, an analogy, this seen often noticed and then often noticed power of the human eye as it controls other human beings and animals by look. So when your third eye is functioning, yeah, you, you, you do have power on those planes that you have transcend, you have power on those planes. Not necessarily mastery, but power, I, I believe is what he talks about in uh, esoteric psychology. Like, you know, after the first initiation, you have power on the physical plane. After the second initiation, you have power on the physical and the astral plane. And after the third, you have power down below on all three of the, the lower worlds. You, ha you have power on them. Then. So, um, I guess that the third, you know, you have mental 
power uh, to bring things in. You know, but we're, we even before that, we are working on the lower mental plane. So this does tie in with the creating thought forms mm -hmm. and bringing into manifestation down low what we're what we're working on i guess on the mental plane um we're manifesting that uh, in other words the soul knows the plan and what alignment is right now absolutely correct the will aspect of the divine man can function and bring about results. So, you know, the divine man, so, so the soul can bring about results way down low. Using a creative aspect, or, or I'm sorry, intelligent will or intelligent will. Tell me. Yeah, yeah, that's creativity. <clears throat> oh, what are we, we looking at the chart? Yeah, I was looking at the chart there. Just try to make, make have that make a little bit more you sense. Pull, you want me to pull it up? I have it on my screen. No, but I mean, well, I mean, you can because I mean, as as you're going up the chart, you can kind of see how you know, what's available to us, I guess. But the soul is then, you know, has contact with the spiritual triad and knows the plan and is instituting the plan down below. I mean, we're, that's where we get the idea that we're, you know, kind of automatons until that mm -hmm. time, essentially. And this is when we talk about you can't really control your life. You're not really controlling your life because it's not probably not the way you would have done it, but it's happening this way. Right. Right. You may not like it. This is what's happening, but you got you to get comfortable in it. This is the plan. The soul knows the plan. You're living out the plan for your life. There is a plan for your life as seen through astrology. It's worked to this point. It's going to continue working. If you can get an alignment with the soul, you can become a participating uh, creator agent. And otherwise, you are along for the ride. Mm -hmm. so, right? Let's keep going and seeing what, what this has to say there. Uh, all right, so then the third aspect of that, or the third activity of, of the third eye is it has a destructive aspect. And the energy flowing through the third eye can have a disintegrating and destroying effect. It can, through its focused attention, directed by the intelligent will, drive out physical matter. It is the agent of the soul in the, it is the agent of the soul in the purific, purificatory work. In the work of purification. Mm -hmm. um, it should be noted here that in each of the subtle bodies in the three worlds, there is a corresponding point of focus. And the center between the eyebrows is but the physical counterpart of inner correspondences. For etheric matter is physical. Through this point of focus, the soul looks out upon or contemplates the mental plane, including the mental mechanism. Similarly, on the emotional plane, the soul is brought into a state of awareness or vision of its emotional sheath 
in the world of astral phenomena and the physical parallel exists for the etheric body. Whoa. Can I read that again? Yeah, definitely. Please. Through this, yeah, through this point of focus, the soul looks out upon or contemplates the mental plane, including the mental mechanism. Similarly, on the emotional plane, the soul is brought into a state of awareness or vision of its emotional sheath and the world of astral phenomena and the physical parallel exists for the etheric body. And the physical parallel exists for the etheric body. Similarly, on the emotional plane, the soul is brought into a state of awareness Well, that'll shut you right up. So, well, it's talking about the center between the eyebrows that led into that, as it's the physical counterpart for those inner correspondences. And through that point, the soul looks out, contemplates the mental plane. The emotional plane is just another term for the astral, isn't it? Right. Um, so it's like that. When you're focusing through the third eye, it's raising your awareness to the mental. Is that raising your awareness, lifting the sheath of the astral phenomena? And what is the physical parallel that exists for the etheric body? What is the etheric body again? The, it's the scaffolding that's the light body scaffolding of the physical body it's intertwined with the physical it's the one it's the one thread that creates the outer that the that matters um, magnetic mag holding to right does that etheric body exist on any particular plane or is it? Yeah, it's, that's on the physical plane. And okay. Oh, plane. yeah, it's, it's, it's right there. Well, you can't. I mean, I guess if once you have etheric vision, you're not going to see it. So that's kind of, so that's, well, it's just, I the think soul you, can look out upon it though. Yeah, and I think it, if you read into that, the paragraph that follows on, it might help clarify it a bit. All right. So I just, I just read ahead and I think, All right, let's do what, it. go ahead, you want me to read it? Sure. It is the third work of the soul that is touched upon here. The destructive work of getting rid of the old forms of shaking out of the body's matter of an undesirable nature and of breaking down the barriers and limitations to true soul activity. And the three, these three activities of the soul through the medium of the third eye are the correspondences to the three aspects and students would find it of interest to work these out. So is that? Well, not just three aspects. This is probably, yeah, I mean. I, but that destructive work, that's referring to kind of dissolving away. Yeah. Um, really everything in the lower two? The lower everything, yeah. You got to get rid of astral. Uh, And not to say that, I, I don't think it's, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think it's, 
saying you can't still enjoy those things, but maybe it is. It's shaking it all away, destroying those desires. Is that essentially uh, what it's saying? Yeah, it's becoming more. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, dispassionate. Hmm. More of a like a permanent dispassion for you know things. Not that things don't. Not that life doesn't continue. But, uh, you know, not, not to say that you, want, you don't have enjoyment. Right. Or, I mean, the soul is the source of that. So you're not getting it from where you thought, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Your enjoyment is not coming from your joy is not coming from the astral plane. It's coming from the soul anyway. So right. you rec you're getting things. This whole thing is changing, I guess. There's a metamorphosis going on there. What, in a way, you're understanding more about what, what is actually taking place. You're not looking out anymore for enjoyment because you know now that's, that's not where you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going there. All right. Where did I leave off? Uh, these three activities of the soul through the medium of the third eye are the correspondences to the three aspects. And students would find it of interest to work these out. Hold the on, scenes... hold on right there. Hold yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Can we, can we work that out? Do it. <laughs> so the will of God would be equivalent to the mind, the mental plane. Right? Love. That's the second aspect would be equivalent to the astral, the Buddhic astral. Uh, this is because it goes down the whole way, right? So we're traversing from the top to the bottom. And then the creative, creative in intelligence. The third would be equivalent to the physical. All right, so we kind of worked that out a little bit, I think. I want to say it again. Yeah, will is, is lined up with spiritual will, wisdom with intuition, and activity. Yeah, creative activity is with the mind. There, I just pulled the chart up on the screen. All right, so I, I was kind of, I'm kind of, it's kind of backwards there. Love, wisdom is connected to the fourth plane, the Buddhic, and that's equivalent to the, uh, they're correlated to the, to the astral. Right. So yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I lost my space again. Oh, it was just after the one lighter through the three activities that sold to me in the third eye, corresponds to three aspects. Students find an interest to work these out. Yeah, so we um, go, go, I believe it goes like two, four, six, and three, five, seven are really, uh, you can, yeah, I mean, you can go all the way through the, through all of these, man. There's, there's so many different correlations. It's, they're all there. The and scene, that's study of the rays is important there too, mm -hmm. you know. What were you gonna say, buddy? Oh, I was gonna start reading again, but not if you yeah. have more to say. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, <laughs> I ain't got no. The seeing of the light within all forms through the agency of the third eye brought into being through the realization of the light in the head, the spiritual light, is but the correspondence to the physical eye. 
revealing forms in the light of the physical sun. This corresponds to the personality, the aspect of control through magnetic energy and the attractive force in the spiritual eye, which is the dominant factor in magical work is the correspondence to the soul. In a most mysterious sense, the soul is the eye of the monad, enabling the monad, which is pure being to work, to contact, to know, and to see. Hmm. All right, so the soul is like the mediating agency there, right? Yeah. The aspect of destruction is the correspondence to the monad or will aspect. In the last analysis, it is the monad that brings about the final abstraction, destroys all forms, withdraws itself from manifestation, and ends the cycle of creative work. Bringing these concepts down to practical expression in relation to the rule under consideration, it can be noted that all these three activities are dealt with in this rule. The third eye opens as the result of conscious development, right alignment, and the inflow of soul life. Then its magnetic controlling force makes itself felt, controlling the lives of the lower bodies, driving forth the lower four elementals, of earth, water, fire, and air, and forcing the lunar lords to abdicate. The personality, which has hitherto been the master, no longer can control, and the soul comes into full domination in the three worlds. The elemental of earth, who is the sum total of the many lives which form the physical body, is controlled and feels the eye of the master, the one master in the head, upon it. The gross elements constituting that body are driven forth and better and more adequate atoms or lives are built in. The elemental of the astral or body of water undergoes similar activity plus a stabilizing effect which brings to an end the, re the restlessness and fluidic tempestuousness which have hitherto characterized it. Through the controlling magnetic power of the spiritual eye, the soul rebuilds the astral body and holds it steady and coherent through its force, uh, through its focused attention. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, that, would have been, that, that would have been a bad word to use. <laughs> it's all right, that's, that's yeah, what it is. Holds it steady, through its co steady and coherent through its focused attention. Again, an analogous process goes forward in the mental body. Old forms disappear before the clear light in which the spiritual man is working. And as the old commentary puts it, one glance, the soul doth cast upon the forms of mind. A ray of light streams out and darkness disappears. Distortions and evil forms fade out and all the little fires die out. The lesser lights are no more seen. The eye through light awakens into life the needed modes of being. To the disciple, this will carry knowledge. To the ignorant, no sense is seen for a sense lacks. The elemental of the air symbolically understood is that substratum of energy, which works through the forms of the etheric body, which is dealt with through the breath and handled through the science of pranayama. This elemental form is the intricate etheric structure the nadis and centers, and all advanced students know well how these are controlled by the focused attention of the soul and contemplation acting through the head center, focused in the region of the third eye and swept into right and specific activity by an act of the will. In the above sentence, I have concentrated the formula for all magical work on the physical plane. It is through the etheric body and the force directed through one or other of the centers that the soul carries on the work in magic. It is through the intense focusing of intention in the head and the turning of the attention through the third eye towards the center to be used that the force finds its correct outlet. That force is made potent by the energizing, directed, intelligent will. Study these points for in them 
you will find the clue to the magical work in your own life reconstruction, to the magical work of human reconstruction, which certain adepts are carrying on, and to the magical work of the evolution of the divine plan, which is the motivating power of the occult hierarchy. That concludes rule six. Man, I love that part uh, that says the soul carries on the work in magic. It's the soul that's doing magic and we become white magicians. Mm -hmm. You're not, you don't just say oh, I'm a magician unless you're pulling rabbits out of a hat. Well, yeah, it's not, I don't think, it's not the magician people might be thinking. Um, I think Nobody Carlos said before that. that the soul, so, and I guess the soul in some sense is the magic, isn't, isn't it? Yeah, and the soul is the initiate. And yeah, so uh, right. This, this is this is the whole thing. It's this yeah. is not us. This is about the soul. This isn't about. Uh, it's not about anything we think it is. I mean, it's so right. obvious. Even in this short rule, mm -hmm. nothing that we're doing makes sense. <laughs> well, <and> that's why <laughs> it led in with uh, uh, one of the simplest of the rules of magic, and at the same time, most practical. Yeah, one upon which the entire success of all magical work depends. Right. So six or seven pages in the blue book has a lot packed into it of what I think is of critical importance. So our, you know, so, so when, when people are trying to manifest um, worldly stuff, a better life, a car, their boyfriend, uh, a, a, a woman, you know. Whatever, right. They're stuck, man. They're stuck. You're stuck at that point. You're so far off. And I can't explain why that just came to me like that. I'm saying you're literally stuck. That's not what's going on. You're you're actually holding up. You're 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 actually delaying. You're holding up potentials. You're standing in the way at that point because. You are not, when you first hear about manifesting, you are not standing in your soul. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. You had not yet moved, uh, you know, the blood has not been drenched in the heart. Just your, the, the ears uh, can still be damaged. I mean, I'm talking about like some of these things. The, uh, You've not made it to the third initiation yet. There's no way. Probably not even the second initiation yet because that's where your desires are at and they're directly correlated to the physical. So mm. I don't even know. We can't even say if they have made it to the first initiation yet. And you're trying to use a function of something from a very high level. You're just standing in the way of your own progress. Well, I think an understanding of the way of the personal progress is delaying the the progress of the the larger well, humanity too. Because the key is that everybody has to kind of be operating on that same level in order for humanity to advance as a whole, right? I think like I think it's said somewhere that a majority needs to hit a certain point in order uh -huh. for humanity to take initiation yeah something like that right but that's kind of the point i was trying to make is that um it needs to be selfless in the sense that we're supposed to be working towards the evolution of humanity as a whole yeah and this is going to have a lot to do with if, yeah. if, if people are kind of misunderstanding what this manifestation aspect means and they're looking at it in terms of manifestation of their personal wealth manifestation of their whatever it is um and i'm not saying that people shouldn't try to attain those things i mean i i'm 
I don't know what I'm saying, but just going back to your point is it's, it's kind of a borderline dangerous thing because they're not, they are holding themselves back in that, in that respect. Um, they're holding themselves down here. Um, I call it creature comforts and earthly possessions, right? Um, not to say that if you have those things, you shouldn't enjoy them, I guess. Um, I know I have some earthly possessions that I enjoy, um, but I'm not, I'm not like praying for those things to be manifest type. I, I, I don't know if that's just that term manifestation, I think is, is, uh, I could be wrong, but I think it's misunderstood and misused. I can't say that people that are doing it are doing it for selfish reasons. I, I don't know. I'm just going to stop because I don't really know what I'm saying. I, I don't agree. <laughs> I, I think you probably, I think you probably can say that with all certainty. Uh -huh. You know, right away, if somebody's being selfish or they're being selfless, that's very clear, sir. Right. So now we got a problem, essentially, because it's so confusing only because almost everybody is selfish. Mm -hmm. That's why it's confusing to the disciples and aspirants on the path, uh, me particularly, on the way up, because I'm looking at the world through the eyes of this normal sea of selfishness mm -hmm. and you're not going to be successful here unless there's some level of selfishness going on right how the hell are you even going to support a family without the idea being in us of selfishness in a sense right i mean that, so there's a weird now you have to work, you have to support a family, you have to do what, you know, use your abilities that were given to you. And that is not being selfish, though. So it's like there's a line between um, working to attain what you need to survive and provide for the survival aspect of your family versus Soul's going to give us working to attain right. everything. Your soul is going to give you what you need. Right. Your life is going to manifest around you as the soul works its magic and the plan works out for you to give you what you need. You may be holding up more or you may be preventing what the soul actually wants to give you by being stuck in selfishness mm -hmm. and looking in one direction all the time because you want this but how do you know i guarantee you what the soul wants for you is better the soul's not going to here to torture us it's right. not the soul is love and understanding and you know all good so it's really just us confusing the situation more or less down here. I think about what me and I and I and selfishness and, uh, and where we're putting our mental powers as these things are happening around us. It's like these things are happening and then we have to kind of justify how and by saying that you did it or something. Mm -hmm. you know, like you didn't do nothing. You did none of this. This is happening. Soul's doing that. This is magic. You know, when we get involved, we get in the way. So when we step out of the way, then, then the soul can really get to work. And, mm -hmm. and that includes the emotional at nature. That, that includes, you know, obviously the physical. And the, this is perfect for what we're just talking about because we're ignorant down here we're standing in the way the soul needs to gain control over the physical the emotional and the mental mm -hmm. and if you're physical emotional and mental 
are all going in separate directions, well, then you, the soul can't really do what it's intended to. Right. It's going to be painful or, or apparently painful to the individual. Right. So then we, we allow that purification. We, we submit almost to the purification, I want to say somehow, right? The lower vehicles are brought under control. Uh, there's a lot there, man. Um, but then once those things are in line, the magic can start. And we're all just scattered down here doing just chaotic nonsense for the most part. And it's so chaotic at some point, it just starts looking normal. Mm -hmm. That's the mistake that we're making. Right. None of this is normal. This is not, this is crazy behavior. It's, in, it's a schizophrenic type of behavior. Even as we, even as the soul takes possession and starts to subordinate these lower natures, it's, it's even more chaotic in a way as it's brought into control. Because there's this fight. Now there's a fight. It's like a fish on a line, like a tuna on a, you know. On a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, it's funny because it seems to be pretty true. Uh, but then, you know, that inertia of that, that fish wears out. That tuna gets tired. And finally, it's just like, you know, the fishermen can start to control it. Right. Hmm. So, like you said, you, you've said this to me before, so you have contact with the soul now at this point. Right. So what, what did you, you, you have a funny thing. You say, you, you cracked me up. Yeah, oh, so well, I'm sure I have a few. What, what, what? You were saying as this comes in, like that's the soul. Well, it's the uh, soul. I think it's the soul trying to tell you something. There you or, go. or give yeah. you something. Yeah. Right. And you can't ignore it because it's, it's, and I mean, we kind of read it through here. It, it, it is the third eye. I mean, it's not a physical eyeball that's going to pop out there, but it's that it's, I get, I don't know what to call it. Soul vision. It's, it's the, it's that that's bringing you in alignment. I think, I don't know, but to me, that's what it feels like. It's like, bringing me into alignment and it's like pay attention to this and like i said i i didn't really pay attention to it before so much um until i like got my astrological reading and realized well geez there's like a crap ton of meaning behind everything that's going on here with me and how it ties into the entire universe and everything that's happening here in real time it's just crazy and so when i realized that i'm like Dude, I've got to pay attention to these little physiological feelings. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. but that to me, that's what I think it is. It's the soul speaking to you and trying to get in alignment so that you're focusing on what needs to be focused on. Um, and the crazy thing is, is when you start doing that, like you really, like we read through here, you really do feel all those, like what you used to might find important to you, it just kind of goes away. Like, I don't worry about money anymore. I mean, I got to have it to pay the bills and whatnot. And it, and it aggravates me when something pops up that I need to pay. But at the same time, I'm not like trying to make crap tons of money just so I can have crap tons of money, if that makes any sense. I don't care about acquiring material things. I just need what I need to survive. And that's it. Um, because the important, 
the important measure for success for me now is like that soul contact and being in alignment and and uh continuing forward on this path because that's where it's at the real reward comes later <laughs> yeah and i i, I hear yeah man kind of got off track there but no no it's not off track because this is a lot about the third eye as it comes into function but there's this there is in my uh, <laughs> i think that there's a a language barrier here uh, because this is energetic right mm -hmm. so it's just like a it's a reflection and this is uh it's like translated or something it's like a translation thing down onto the physical and and then the reason i say that is because of what the introduction of this rule was the devas of the lower four feel the force when the eye opens they are driven forth and lose their master there's uh the lower four now, that could be the lower four subplanes. Of the mental. The devas of the lower four feel the force when the eye opens and are driven forth and lose their master. Um, the lower four are, you know, that would start with the buddhic plane and then down, right? Yeah, or, or, is, or is that what you said, the lower four of the mental? Or talking about the lower four, but, it, you know, there's also the lower four of all of the planes mm -hmm. are need to be, uh, we, you know, we're supposed to be, have control over the lower four subplanes of each plan so so i wouldn't say just the mental the babies are the lower four feel the force and then you know the devas it said the devas are what are, are the creator aspect of uh, the vegetable kingdom and all they're, they're like creating mm -hmm. this the, uh, the artists, the, the painters of the screen kind of thing. So, yeah. There's, some, there's something there for sure. They're driven forth and, and, and put into work, right? They're sent out to work that mm. The thought form has been pushed forward and let go. And now, you know, the it's going to uh, be manifested. It's, and then they, they bring it about. Painting. I don't know, you know, very abstract talk there, I guess. Right. And I, and I know nothing. So I'll preface every video and every time I speak, <laughs> I actually don't know anything. At all, we, we, whatsoever. It's just, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but I, 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 I agree. I and I lay the same disclaimer. I was just laughing because, you know, I, I just think of some of like the financial videos that I watch, and they always disclaim it with, "I am not a financial advisor. Do not take my advice. This is for educational purposes only." Well, we are not spiritual advisors. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, don't this, this is, is for not educational even for purposes only. It's right? not even barely for that. <laughs> right. It's more it's more for entertainment. But yeah, right. I mean when we're reading the words of DK, then it's educational. Every right. time we open our mouth beyond that, it's who knows, who knows what it is. <laughs> it's entertainment. <laughs> it's just our opinion. <laughs> just something. Something. Right. I don't even. All right. Well, you, uh, that that's rule six, man. So, yeah. Good rule. Yeah, I think we definitely have a talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to talk about it and talk about in it. 
So, so we yeah, pick you can up pick that apart. Yeah, I, that definitely. would be an interesting one to uh, listen to Michael Robbins and the Moria Federation um, dig in on that. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, right. Because I know they. You said that they did this. Yeah, they've uh, got the whole white series or white white series, white magic series on their website. They go through a lot of the AAB work, so very good. Good, good All stuff. Right. All right, next week, rule seven. Sounds good, buddy. Hold All on right. One second.